one. Hi everyone, this is Tanner here, and I'm today I'm joined with my good friend Joe. Hello. And welcome to Comics to Cinema Conversations, episode number two, where last time we talked about the DCEU. And today we'll begin with the MCU, also known as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Since there's about 20 or so movies in the MCU, we'll be doing a phase per video. And today we'll be covering phase one of the MCU, which covers Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, and then the first Avengers film. So we have these six movies. So jumping in with the first one being Iron Man. Um, personally, kind of a bit of a hot take here, but I am not a big fan of this movie. Now, I did not see this movie when it came out. Um, and this is something I should preface with phase one. I did not see um these movies when they came out. The first MCU movie I actually saw in theaters when it released was Iron Man 3. So I saw a lot of these phase one movies out of order. But even when seeing Iron Man, I was not a big fan of it. There's about four screenwriters attached to it, as you can see in his shows. I feel like that the film is very um, kind of flavorless to an extent. John Favreau, who directs this, he's worked on The Mandalorian and other projects. I don't feel like you really have his signature directing style in this movie. And while, yes, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. here going to the cast is fantastic, I think he's almost better in the team-up movies. It's kind of like the character of Han Solo. I like Han Solo when he's when a, with a group of people in the Star Wars films because I think that comedic dry humor that both the characters of Iron Man and Han Solo share work better for, in a group. And I just think the Iron Man movies stand alone. They, uh, yeah, Tony and Iron Man, he's, he's funny, he's likable, but I just think he works better with the team-ups. Um, and then for me, one of the biggest reasons I'm not a big fan of this is they really waste Jeff Bridges as Obadiah Stane, who I think could have been a top-tier villain, but he's mid-tier. The writing is just not that great. Um, I get this is the first MCU movie, and there definitely is something about kind of the development and how it came about that is special. I'm not going to take that away, but overall as a movie, uh, I watched it and was not really impressed uh, that much. About Sorry, I wanted to make sure you weren't saying any more. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Just, I right. wasn't impressed with it. Okay. Um, I think this is an interesting movie because it's the very first MCU movie. Um, it's kind of the one that started it all. Lots of people love this movie. I think it's a good movie, but it's not one of my favorites. It's been a while since I've seen it to, to give the movie some credit. And I appreciate what it introduced and how it introduced all these staples of the MCU that we like now know and love, like the, the quips, Robert Downey Jr., the kind of more workman style, directing style. Um, yeah, and I just, it's cool how some uh, comics writers and artists kind of contributed to it. And I think it's interesting how um, this, there's a little more practical effects in this film compared to the later ones, such as with the suits. Like Downey actually wore more of the suit compared to some of the later movies. But I definitely think it's a, it's a good movie, but it's just not my favorite personally. I think it's, it feels a little, I don't wanna say dated because it doesn't feel dated but it feels like the MCU has kind of moved on from how it was back then. It feels like they've done more. So going back to this one, it almost feels a little too small scale, which is not any fault of this movie, but that's just how I feel about it. Yeah, as you can see here on the Wikipedia page, for those you know who are watching this in video format, the production is neat. Uh, yeah, like I said, I saw this film 
really a lot after kind of the um, other MCU movies I've seen. But like I go back and watch, and we'll talk about this movie later, Captain America 1. And that movie holds up really well, and we both have a rank very highly. Iron Man 1 just doesn't. I don't think it has that kind of style to it. Even films I'm not a huge fan of, and I like less than Iron Man, like Thor. I like less than Iron Man 1, but Thor at least has a style. We can see, we can talk about if it's a good style or not, but at least they have a style. And I think part of the reason Iron Man feels dated is that it just doesn't really stick out. Uh, Like you said, there's some stuff here that is throughout the mcu but it's also a very kind of dark movie i feel like that this is the closest that the marvel has ever gotten to the dceu there's some stuff here with the terrorist scenes there's this one scene i know that um is like there's this kid watching his father getting like beat up it's a very intense movie and i feel like that some of these earlier mcu movies were a bit more intense and then kind of the avengers and stuff kind of got more into the joking side of things so yeah overall i am in one i don't have that much to add for rating i would probably go seven out of ten uh, out of a tier list i'll have it low b or high c tier it's definitely not my least favorite mcu movie but it's definitely one i don't regard very highly and i think that like a lot of people are like oh my gosh this film's fantastic it's revolutionary but a movie also needs to hold up other films like you know, Jaws, Star Wars New Hope, Wizard of Oz, those films are very revolutionary, hold up well. I just don't think really Iron Man does. So overall, I'll go 7 out of 10. Joe, if you want to wrap up with your thoughts and any additional notes to say about it. Um, I don't have that much else to say about the movie. I think we kind of covered it enough. But for ranking, I'd say probably like a 7.5 out of 10. Okay. Is there anything that you like? Uh, um, that I kind of dislike is like, is there anything you're a bit more positive on? I think it just, it works a little better as a film for me compared to how you thought about it. When did like you I see, feel, go ahead. When did you see this movie? Like, did you see it when it first came out or when was your viewing of it? I saw it a couple years after it came out, closer to when, closer to like 2011, 2012. Okay, because I saw it around like 2013 or 14. So I, oh, okay. I, I will say this, I, because my MCU viewing order is weird because I saw like Iron Man 3, Captain America 1 first, then I saw the Avengers. And I saw most of Phase 2 before seeing this movie. So I think if I saw Iron Man 1 earlier in this cycle, I would have liked it more. And then one more question I do have is, a lot of people compare Batman and Iron Man and kind of the trilogies they have with them. Would you, what would you say is better between this movie and Batman Begins? Which do you like more? I prefer Batman Begins. Okay, so do I. So... Moving on here to The Incredible Hulk, um, the second movie in the MCU, one that's often kind of forgotten about, and I haven't seen it all the way through, but there are some things I want to mention. So first of all, one thing I like about it, as we'll go into this, is kind of the design of the Hulk. I think overall, you know, the Hulk in the MCU has been a bit eh. Uh, to say the least, but I think in this film, it looks cool. Even Abomination, like, he looks neat, and I think that this movie kind of has that more realistic tone um, to it, and I will say this. There's a lot of talk about kind of Edward Norton and Mark Ruffalo in the MCU, which we'll talk about here, but I think Norton, from what I've seen, I do kind of like him overall. I think that we'll talk about the Hulk debate now, but Mark Ruffalo is a fantastic actor. I, you know, he's in Spotlight and he's been in a lot of movies I've seen. And I think he's a top tier actor and so so is Edward Norton. I think um, both of them are really great. And I think that Norton, you can see why he's more of this like distressed scientist and why he's more like a man who has anger issues. Well, I think Mark Ruffalo does more of the science geek stuff well like if you had edward norton's bruce banner and 
end game doing the time travel. I don't know if that would work. So I think between Ruffalo and Norton, there's a perfect version of Bruce Banner. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, I do like the post credit scene with uh, Tony Stark talking to General Ross, who has been a recurring character. I, it's a film that I can't give a pump or grade on, but I do think it does some things well and kind of, because the Hulk and the other MCU movies is either funny or he has these big epic moments. And I feel like in this movie, you get more of that monster side of him. So that's kind of my base thoughts for it. Joe, if you want to say your thoughts on it. So I have not seen this movie, to be completely honest. Um, but I will say that I do like Edward Norton quite a bit as an actor. So I think he was, once again, I haven't seen this movie, but I think he was a very good choice for Bruce Banner. And if you uh, look at interviews with him, uh, even recent interviews, you can hear uh, Edward Norton talk about how he wanted to make sort of a more like epic portrayal of the Hulk. Like he mm -hmm. compared it to like Greek mythology. Yeah, you can see. Gods and, and stuff like that. Yeah, as you can see in, in there. Um, but I think that's a very cool take on the Hulk. And it's something that I wish we could have seen more of in the MCU. And you, you, there's still a little bit of it in Avengers 1, but I really liked the idea that Norton had for Hulk and how he wanted to portray him. So I think it's kind of a shame that he, for whatever reason, him and Marvel went separate ways. Yeah, because to be honest, I think we both agree the Hulk has been very disappointing in the MCU. He has some cool moments, but overall he's lower for me as a character. Uh, and I just feel like that this could have been a unique portrayal. Because even Hulk's best moments in Avengers, which we'll talk about here soon, yeah, he punches things, but I feel like you could have gone a bit more into him. Um, so I do agree with that. Do you know what happened with Liv Tyler as Betty Ross? Because I know, like, that's his love interest, and she's a big part of the comics. So I don't think, like, the character dies in the film. So I'm surprised she hasn't been brought back yet in the MCU because, I mean, yeah, they didn't bring, you know, Edward Norton back, but they brought back other actors like who plays... General Ross, William Hurt. So, do you know why Liv Tyler doesn't appear again? Because I found that kind of weird. I don't. Um, they could always bring her back for the She Hulk show. Ooh. Yeah, I would like that. I just, I don't know. I think this is just kind of a weird movie and kind of in this in between uh, film. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to give it a grade because. I haven't seen it and then Joe hasn't seen it. So we'll, we'll just kind of do without a grade for this movie. Um, so two MCU films down for phase one. Now we go to um, Iron Man 2, which I really do not like. This is actually my least favorite Marvel movie. Um, I remember seeing this film. Uh, uh, my family and I were taking a vacation, a car trip, and we had like one of those portable DVD players. And I remember seeing this film because I'm like, okay, let's see how this goes. And I really disliked it. Um, I will say this for positives. Uh, I think that John Favreau, his styles felt more in this movie. But overall, this film has way too much going on. For stars, I don't really like the whole relationship relationship with Rhodey and Tony in this movie it's kind of bitter even though they fight together at the end you know they teamed up yay I found it really weird and I really like Don Cheadle as an actor and I wish that he was handled better in this uh film uh I like how Black Widow is in this movie she has some cool action scenes and I think there are some neat moments with her so I like that um and I do think that Sam Rockwell is pretty entertaining as Justin Hammer, but there's so many issues, convoluted villains. There's so many plots in this movie about Tony, his dad, and these villains in the scheme. And it's just like way too much. And it's really boring too. Um, it's a film that I, I watched and I was fast forwarding through a lot because I just feel like it's very kind of blah. It's one of those blah kind of 
flat action movies for me that I kind of forget about. Uh, Joe mentioned how Iron Man 1 had those practical effects. I don't feel like the sequel, this might be wrong, but I feel like the sequel just is too CGI heavy and it's just, there's not a lot of colors. It's just a very kind of eh looking film. I'm, I'm very negative on this movie. I just really found it to be a misstep. Um, and like, yes, Robert Downey Jr. is great as the character and there's some nice stuff, but overall it's my least favorite MCU movie because the Marvel movies, what they do best is they give you the energy, but this film doesn't. So I'm very ne negative and uh, I'm interested to, uh, Joe, hear what you say about it. I think most people would agree that Iron Man 2 is definitely one of the weaker uh, MCU movies in general, just because of the story isn't that great. It just feels very like made by committee, which you don't usually get with Favreau movies. And I know he's uh, talked a lot about uh, how making this movie was, he had a lot of issues making this movie due to interference from uh, all the head honchos at Marvel who were in power at the time. I believe even his, uh, the Favreau's movie Chef is kind of a metaphor for his experience making Iron Man 2. Oh. Yeah, I, I saw a recent YouTube video about that. But uh, anyways, I just think this is kind of a weak movie. It's like, it's the, it's one of the prime examples that you point to for like, what, what is a sequel that is way worse than the original movie? And this is one of them. I will say I do like Sam Rockwell in this movie and wish he'd come back to the MCU. Yeah, there's a rumor he might appear in the Armor Wars TV show War Machine. Um, is there anything in specifically you don't like about it? Is it just kind of a bland movie for, for you? Yeah, I can't think of it's been a while since I've seen it, so I can't think of anything specific off the top of my head, but I just remember it being feeling very bland and boring. Yeah, and it just kind of loses that flavor for me. I think that the MCU for phase one was still figuring things out, you know, very much Iron Man 1, Hulk, Iron Man 2, even parts of Thor, which we'll talk about next, are very kind of have this kind of bland-ish feeling. There's not a lot of energy, and I feel like that Marvel was still trying to kind of figure out where they were at. And I feel like that the issue of Iron Man 2 was, and I'll go back here to the phase one is that the release of it's really weird you get iron man hulk and then go straight into iron man 2 again and i'm like that's just two years is too short there's an interview with favreau and he's like i wanted three years but he got two instead so in my opinion i think it should have gone iron man hulk and thor then iron man 2 i just think that is better kind of for the release dates and overall the structure of things so i do think that kind of hurt with it and you know, people went to the MCU at this point. I think that Marvel just kind of got way too rushed with this film. Another thing um, that I do want to mention that's also interesting is that this is kind of when Kevin Feige became the main producer. Because as you can see, before this, Avi Arad was also listed as a co-producer. And the thing about Avi Arad is that he kind of had a hand in the Sony Spider-Man films in the mid-2000s and kind of meddled with them. And there's a lot of stuff about him that people do not like. So I kind of find this interesting how from now on, this was kind of Feige's first kind of like full producing credit. That is a cool thing about it. Overall for grades, I'm probably going five out of 10 firemen too. So Joe, if you want to say any last thoughts and uh, give your grade for this uh, film. Another thing I um, also do want to mention is also Justin Theroux as a screenwriter. I feel like that sometimes the Marvel films do better when they uh, have sometimes um, a lot of screenwriters. Um, and I just think sometimes with Theroux doing this, it, it was a lot for him. And I feel like that 
Um, they maybe should have brought him back. Maybe some other riders because he seems almost um, underwhelmed in this project at times. So that's another thing I do want to mention um, is that how I think that Marvel was just way too kind of rushed with the uh, project of Iron Man 2. And I think that's something that really hurt them in the end because the thing about Iron Man 1 is that even though I'm not high on it, I still feel like that it has a sense of direction. I just think ultimately um, the, the thing with Iron Man 2 is that it's just way too rushed. And I think if they wanted to tell multiple stories about it, then get more than one screenwriter. I think just having Justin Thoreau here's a lot for him. So they, they maybe should have brought in some other people. But yeah, overall, Iron Man 2, way too rushed. Feels probably the most studio-driven out of all the MCU films. So I'm just very low on it. I'll probably go five out of 10. Um, my least favorite Marvel movie, Joe, if you want to give your um, final grade for the, the film, and then we can talk about Thor. I definitely agree with you that it's one of the weakest MCU movies in general. And it just, it feels very, very much like a step down from how good the original Iron Man was and I believe that's probably due to as you've talked about it being made by at least feeling like it was made by a committee and not having kind of that Favreau touch that all this other projects have so I'd I'd also give it a five out of ten all right so now we move on to Thor which is a very interesting film because, you know, most people say Thor is boring and they move on. And yeah, it is a boring movie for sure. But there's something interesting about this film. Because I remember I saw this film with my parents, who are not the biggest Marvel fans. But they actually like this film a good amount. And there's something kind of about Thor that I think is appealing to kind of um, audiences. Where it's a half epic story, half fish out of water and I think both stories could have been good but they don't mix well Kenneth Bronin is a director of this and he just I'm just not the biggest fan of it if all the Dutch angles and the tilts it's very weird and Asgard could have been this really neat place and it looks there's just not a lot going on here I just feel like that overall you know there could have been this really cool epic very much Lord of the Rings in space but you don't do that. And then the fish out of water stuff is kind of just, you know, okay, it's funny, but there's nothing really there. So I feel like Thor, you know, kind of has some appeal to people. Oh, it's a funny movie. It's very likable. Chris Hemsworth, I think, portrays the character well. People say that early, early Thor is boring. He's not the most intriguing character, but I think he overall has the kind of presence of Thor and I think he does that well um Natalie Portman is a very talented actress I don't think that Jane Foster is the best written character uh Tom Hiddleston as Loki is fantastic in all the films I like him in this one it's definitely more of a low-key performance as in he's very much quiet but I think that actually works to his strengths um, um the human characters like Eric Selvig, I'm not the biggest fan of. Like I said, I feel like Thor has two movies trying to be one. It's definitely, in my opinion, the worst MCU movies, but it's not a terrible one. It's just kind of eh for me. Um, I don't have that much to add on to, but yeah, it establishes Thor well to an extent, but I think it could have overall been uh, a better movie. If you want to say a take on it, Joe. Yeah, uh, I'd agree with you that it's it's a good movie for for what it is. It introduces all the Asgardian characters that we know and love. It's uh, and because of that, its cast is overall I think a very very good. I do think the human characters could have been more interesting because they're just kind of there. I think it works better in this movie than it does in Thor 2, where it feels a lot more shoehorned. 
Mm-hmm. I think the the fish out of water stuff in this one is pretty good. I enjoyed it when it, I saw it close to when it first came out, so I think I appreciated it a little more. I I'd, I'd watch it again. It's been a while since I've seen it, but it's it's not my favorite MCU movie by any stretch of the imagination. But I like it a lot. What do what do you like about it? I like just the the kind of Shakespearean feeling of it that comes from Kenneth Branagh's directing style because he made a couple Shakespearean films, so you kind of get that feeling, a very like epic, uh, sort of old old fashioned style of filming that fits uh, Asgard. Yeah, um, he did. Yeah, a couple of the Harry Potter movies, The Road to El Dorado. So he definitely has, I guess, the stuff to do a film like this. Um, oh, is this way what he started in directing? Anyways, oh yeah, he did Hamlet. Um, so I guess he has both um, acted and directed. So he's very talented to film in the show. Like I think his style is done well, and definitely, like you said, the stuff from Hamlet. You can see the issue I have, and I want to hear your thoughts on this is do you think there's enough Asgard because in this movie I just feel like we really don't explore it enough to be honest I definitely uh, I agree with you that we could use some more Asgard in this movie because it's probably some of the most of the better parts of this movie are when they're in Asgard so I think I agree with you that more Asgard would have been better and then also, what do you think of Chris Hemsworth as Thor? Because a lot of people say he's boring, but like I said, you kind of see this and there's a lot of detail, like the way he fights and the way he interacts. Like, yeah, he doesn't quip the most, but I feel like the character of Thor is almost someone who's been more kind of quiet and sedentary. He's more, hmm, you know, in his thoughts, very similar to Drax with Guardians of the Galaxy. And I think, you know, he's still funny. He still has his cool moments. Um, so, you know, he wasn't my favorite in these early films, but I did enjoy him. I'm just kind of interested to hear kind of what you think of him as Thor early on. I think he gives overall a good performance in these earlier movies. It's definitely more restrained. Mm -hmm. than kind of, as we, we've said before, more like Shakespearean compared to how he plays them a little more modern and comedic in some of the later movies. But I think he does a good job in these early ones. Yeah, I would agree with that. I definitely think also Tom Hiddleston is really restrained as Loki because I'm watching this and I'm like, yeah, he, he's a nice villain, but then he really takes it to a whole new level in the Avengers. So I like how kind of Thor's a good setup movie. It's definitely a, like a decent setup movie. It's just ranks lower for me because as an overall film it just seems very um basic um if i had to go with a grade for this i would probably go mm, maybe six i think six out of ten is a good grade for this one it's not terrible but it's just not great uh joe if you want to give any final thoughts on your grade for thor before we go into captain america one only other additional thing i could think of to say is that i did like the uh hawkeye cameo I oh, that was the another, yeah a neat way to kind of set up the future movies but i'd overall give it a seven out of ten okay so you're a bit higher on this um film um oh also another question what do you think of like the destroyer like the giant robot at the end because that also felt that was kind of a negative for me it felt out of place but i'm kind of interested to hear what you think of that I thought it was pretty cool. I like the design of it. It's ultimately not super interesting, but visually it's pretty cool. That, that's a good way to des describe Thor. It's not the most interesting, but it looks visually cool. Now going to Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, Joe, I know you're a big fan of this movie, so I'm actually going to let you take the reins on this one. You can kind of say your opening thoughts of why you love it, because I know you really like this movie. So if you want to go ahead and uh, begin with this film sure so this is actually one of my favorite movies in the mcu uh sometimes at different points 
I've considered it my favorite. Now I'm not really sure because there's other really good MCU movies, but it's definitely up there. It, this was the first MCU movie I saw in theaters with some of my friends. So I think I have kind of good memories of seeing it on the big screen for the first time and that's kind of helped. But I think overall it's a very well well made movie. Uh, casting wise, it's phenomenal. Introduced a lot of great characters some that would be used in later movies and some that wouldn't like Chris Evans is just like a perfect Captain America and makes the character even more interesting than he is in the comics um Tommy Lee Jones he's a good kind of uh like hard-ass drill sergeant type character Hugo Weaving really great villain uh Haley Atwell as Peggy Carter everyone loves her Sebastian Stan, who later becomes the Winter Soldier. I, st I actually thought, uh, I didn't realize he was, Stan was uh, the Winter Soldier and Bucky when I first saw Winter Soldier. I thought they got two different actors because he did like such a good job at playing both characters. But we'll talk about that more in phase, whatever the next phase is. But anyways, uh, this movie is directed by Joe Johnston, who also did The Rocketeer. So I think he was kind of an inspired choice to have a more kind of throwback superhero. But yeah, I just, I really enjoy this movie. Have you ever seen The Rocketeer? I have not. I've heard it's very good. And I've seen, I think I've seen clips and it looks pretty interesting, but I haven't seen the whole thing. Yeah, um, so I agree with what you said. I really like this movie a lot. I remember seeing it with my dad. He really enjoyed it, as did I. It's a very rewatchable film. I've seen it a lot of times. The thing about this movie I love is the style. It has this kind of classic Indiana Jones, especially Last Crusade, kind of rocketeer, kind of this like classic adventure vibe that I think fits very well for the Captain America setting. And that's why I like it. Like you can see here, the, the Seth photos are even very like well detailed they fit the time period also the effects are outstanding i mean i like i still think that skinny or priest um steve rogers looks fantastic like that is some fantastic cgi when i saw this film i didn't know who chris evans was i'm like oh man this guy's pretty skinny like i i didn't really understand the effect but i i mean that to a compliment of the film um i'll say this i think chris evans as steve rogers is fantastic casting um in my opinion he's better than robert downey jr as iron man i really like them and they're close but i just think chris evans does a fantastic job and captain america as a character is neat because you know he's respectful he's patriotic he's strong you know he sticks up for the little guy but in the comics i just have never found him that interesting i think that chris evans adds his personality to him and I think that he's just able to really make the character his own in a way. Um, with casting, um, Tommy Lee Jones, I actually kind of forgot who he was in the movie. I really like, um, what's his name? Stanley Tucci as the scientist who helps Steve. It was kind of sad when he dies in the film. That was a, a very sad moment um he go weaving as the red skull he was always kind of that ah, laughing villain um i i think we should have gotten more from him and i think overall he was good but could have been better that's kind of my thoughts on him um to be honest i'm not the biggest fan of peggy carter in the mcu people love her and she's a nice character she has great moments i think Haley atwell portrays this character well i just wish we got more of her in this movie what i do think they do well is a good job of bucky in this film and that overall feel of the film and chris evans really having a great underdog story like when he jumps on the landmine during training camp it's a fake it, it shows kind of his kind of thoughts towards kind of the country and how he's going to step up for people i just really like the small details that's why i like this movie a lot more than say iron man one or thor is because i think this film has a lot of details in it that really help expand it so i really like it um joe if there's anything else you want to 
uh, add on to this film? Yeah, you can say it. Uh, I know people say, some people say that this movie kind of falls apart about halfway through, through but I would disagree and say I think it's pretty strong, like all the way through. I think the action is pretty well directed, like stunt choreography, it all looks pretty good. I don't remember any like noticeably bad CGI last time I saw it. Uh, I just think it's a very well-made movie and it's one that's kind of was like a model for the future MCU movies. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. And I think this was the first MCU movie I saw out of this Iron Man 3. Um, yeah, it's just a very rewatchable movie and I think very highly of it. And I love Chris Evans as his character. Even the design of the cap uniform, which I'll see is listed here. I think it looks pretty good in all honesty. Yeah, people say it's a bit cheesy, but I think that kind of goes and kind of helps um, with it, to be honest. So um, I think overall, you know, people say, oh, early Captain America is very boring. I just don't feel that way. I think there's a lot of great details in it. Um, is this my favorite Marvel movie? I would say it's in my top 10, definitely not top five. I'll probably go eight. 0.5 out of 10. Joe, if you want to give your final grade for this film before we go on to the Avengers. I'd give it a 9. Okay, yeah, I, I don't blame you. It's a very, very uh, fun movie. Now, when you saw this film, you said you saw it in theaters. Did you know about the MCU at that point? Or were you just like, hey, let's go see this fun-looking Marvel movie? Like, what was your, like... What were your expectations going into when you first saw it? Uh, it was actually, it was kind of like family friends that I saw it with. So a couple of my friends and then my dad and his friend. So we all like went and saw it. And it was kind of the, the parents' idea to go see it since they were big comics fans. So it was kind of, a, felt like a kind of an event for me when I was younger. So that, that was why I enjoyed it. That's cool, but what, what, when you saw, did you know about, like, the MCU, like, Iron Man and Thor, or were you just, like, going in kind of blind, quote-unquote? I don't remember, to be honest. That oh. was so long ago that I don't really remember if I knew much about the MCU. I might have known about Thor, but I don't think I remembered knowing about Hulk or Iron Man. Gotcha, yeah. I think one thing about this movie, it has kind of just a nice nostalgic feeling for both of us and i think that is important in filmmaking because y'all have everyone has those movies you grow grow up with now we go to the big one the avengers the last movie of phase one um i love this movie to be honest it's probably my favorite marvel movie backstory with me with this so um I did not see this movie when it first came out because when I was little, I had very like sensitive hearing and um, I remember my parents went to go see this and it's a very loud film with all the action. They're like, I don't know if you'll like it. And I never saw it in theaters. I remember like really wanting to and everyone was talking about it and I was missing out on it. And I remember I rented it from the library one time and I loved it. This film, in my opinion, has perfect pacing i rewatched it and everything is great i love how we get a little intro clip for each of our heroes we see iron man like repairing something steve working out uh we find bruce in another place helping people it sets up all those characters well what i love love about this movie is the interactions we have not only that final group shot at the end but there's great stuff i actually really like that thor and iron man uh sequence at the beginning when they fight each other that's just really cool to see those two worlds combine the quipping that goes on between the characters uh like when thor and hulk have that little scrimmage and eventually that end shot is fantastic but the interactions between these characters are done so well and i think it's become a model for team up movies and i think the cast and all honesty just gel off each other so well as I said, Robert Downey Jr. is fantastic as the character, and I think he is perfect in the team of movies. And I like the little kind of beef that's between Steve and Tony in this movie. It sets up future MCU films well without seeming like setup. 
Um, I think Chris Evans is fantastic in this film. He gets that leadership in the final fight. And Captain America, I feel like this is the movie that made me really like him. He's this likable guy that wants to do well. Uh, I like the Hulk in it. I think Mark Ruffalo has some good scenes as Bruce. You have the Hulk smash and the I'm always angry cap. So many quotable stuff, even the puny God stuff. Just a lot of nice stuff from Hulk. Thor, I, I do like in this film, and I like how you also have Hawkeye and Black Widow in this movie. Um, also, Loki's fantastic. Tom Hiddleston, who we'll kind of talk about more as the character later. Uh, this was kind of his big breakout performance, and he is fantastic. And I like how each Loki has a scene with the Avengers. You know, he has the scene where him and Tony talk in the tower. He has that scene, in, I think, Germany with Cap. Him and Thor have some stuff. He has moments where he like taunts Natasha and Hawk, and he, you know, he mind controls Hawkeye and there's that Hulk scene. So I like how the villain Loki interacts with each of the heroes because it feels personal for all of them. Uh, overall, it's a movie that's so well paced. I love the action. Uh, it's my favorite MCU movie. I think it hits all the notes well. And I think other Marvel movies I love like Infinity War and Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, owes something to the Avengers. So that's my overall kind of opening thoughts. If, Joe, you want to say your take on it. I agree with you that this is a very good movie, uh, regardless of uh, not to. I don't want to really comment on Joss Whedon because I'm not really sure what his situation is right now, but I think. I think he was a, a good choice for directing this movie, as evidenced by some of his earlier work, like Firefly or Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that he's very good with, with quips and humor. And I think this movie does a really good job of balancing some of the more darker moments with humor. Uh, I think that, once again, the... The cast they've managed to assemble does a really good job bouncing off each other, like you said. I think it was cool after seeing Captain America how this movie kind of continues right off the back of it. That was kind of a surprise for me at the time because I wasn't really expecting it because as we've kind of talked about, I'm not sure how much I really knew about the MCU back then. This is probably my favorite uh, appearance of the Hulk in the MCU. I think this has the best balance of that like darkness that Bruce Banner needs to have alongside Hulk actually being able to do some cool stuff. But yeah, overall, I enjoy this movie a lot. Yeah, um, I like I said, I think the Hulk, because he really gets sidetracked in the MCU because in Phase 2, he appears in Age of Ultron where he has some neat moments, and then he goes to space, then he's in Ragnarok, and he has some nice moments, and then, so you have those two things, and then he doesn't Hulk out in Infinity War, and then you have Professor Hulk, who we'll talk about in Endgame, but yeah, Hulk's a really side character in the MCU, so uh, I'm glad he gets his moments to shine in this movie, because you don't have that much more, in all honesty, which is kind of sad. I also do want to mention Alvin Silvestri's Avengers score, which in my opinion is maybe my favorite score. It's up and up there with Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Jurassic Park. It is just such a fantastic moment when, you know, when all those heroes are gathered in the center. And I think that this movie, you know, lived up to the hype and delivered on more. And I think that it's a movie that's just, in my opinion, it's like Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, just perfect pacing. I don't know if it'll ever be replicated. There might be movies better than it in its own genre. But for me, I, I just think it did that kind of pacing stuff so unique. And I like how each Avenger has their moments to kind of shine in this. You know, Hulk has the quips. Thor has some nice stuff with Loki. Um, and uh, Cap has some great moments. And I think that just, you know, Chris Evans... Um, overall, I feel like comes into the role in this film. Like Cap the first Captain America movie, like I said, I really like. And I think Evans has some like fantastic moments, but I feel like in this movie kind of becomes that leader and everyone kind of has the role on the Avengers they stay with. You know, Iron Man's the Quipper, 
Cap's the leader. Thor is kind of the tough guy. And I like how um, they kind of come with these roles in these movies. They kind of come into them and they stay with them for the rest of the uh, MCU. So I think that is something that I really like in this movie in terms of kind of these character defining traits. Um, I do also want to mention real quick the kind of characters of um, Black Widow and Hawkeye because you know, people don't really comment on them. For me, I like the humanness. I like kind of how we see the human story through them. They're kind of the relatable characters. I've always found Hawkeye to be a very kind of underrated character like he's not my favorite but he has some great moments he's really fun to watch with the archery and i always never got the jokiness for him yeah he might not have these superpowers but he's someone who's very accurate with a bow and i like the relationship with colson uh clark Gregg is really great in the film uh i think black widow's really good in the movie her intro being this super spy is really neat and i think overall that she shows, you know, why she's great on this team and she has a lot of cool moments. And that's another thing is the really genre meshing because Black Widow almost fights like in a Bond movie. You know, Thor kind of has this Shakespeareanness. Cap has that kind of classicness, the way they fight. So I think coming together with the styles is something that I also really like about this movie. And I think that's something that future Avenger films do pretty well. And I do think that this film is a stepping off point, you know, Infinity War and Endgame have definitely been revolutionary. And I'm not doubting that, or I'm not saying that it's not, but I think there's something about this film that is um, really just kind of fantastic in the way it's molded. And overall, uh, for me, I think that the Avengers really kind of set that precedent for the rest of the MCU. And I think that overall the characters are great. You know. Um, I, I don't know if there's a character. That's really bad in this movie. Even though people like Hawk and Black Widow. Like I said not in it as much. I still like the human element of it. And Loki's fantastic. So Joe I'm interested to hear. What you think of Hawkeye and Black Widow. Because people kind of. Especially Hawkeye. People kind of hate on him in this movie. But. I think he has some really cool moments and adds a unique human element to it with Coulson and that whole thing. I think they're kind of underused as characters in these in this movie specifically. A lot of screen time is given to some of the uh, more like larger than life characters, so it feels like they're kind of pushed into the onto the sidelines a little bit. But I think it does a pretty decent job with them. Uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye both get some pretty cool moments, even though Hawkeye is mind controlled for a large portion of the film. Yeah, one thing I do have an issue with is how this film like sidetracks his characters. Like Hulk gets lost for a couple moments, and Hawkeye gets mind controlled. Overall, I thought that was a bit eh. Um, do you have anything to say about Loki? Because, like I said, this was kind of his breakout role. Do you have anything to add to what you thought of? Tom Hiddleston as the role in this film? I think it's interesting because it feels like Loki is kind of at his most villainous at this point. Uh, So it definitely feels like a a little different of a performance compared to later on. So I think that's interesting. Uh, Overall, I think Hiddleston does a really good job in the role, even though he's playing a more like villainous version compared to what we're used to nowadays of the character yeah i'm honestly not a fan of how kind of sometimes loki acts like a hero like there are some great moments in films we'll talk about later but in this in some films i'm like and with him so i like him as the villain colson his death is really tragic uh maria hale has always been for me a very underrated character i wish she was used more in the mcu She's always been uh, real. Uh, she, you know, has always been kind of the hero based, but I feel like Maria Hill is a really great character that you really kind of get a lot of depth on. Um, Nick Fury, great as well. I think everyone um, does a good job in this 
film of contributing and it all comes together very well. I'm going to give this film, I think, a 10 out of 10. It's one of those films, like I said, that I think just measures up to the test of cinematic time. It's one of the highest grossing movies. Also great end credit scene with Thanos. So, Joe, if you have any final thoughts for this film and then kind of phase one uh, as a whole. I don't have much more to say about this film. I just think it's uh, it's a very, I'd say, underrated nowadays because people always talk about the later Avengers movies, but this one kind of gets forgotten. But overall, I'd say phase one was pretty pretty good for, for its time, at least. I do think the uh, the latter half is stronger than the first half. But overall, I'd say it was a pretty effective start to the MCU. Yeah, I think that's a good way to say it's effective. Um, you know, overall, I know the grades I gave on the films are lower, but I feel like that it had a good starting off point. It definitely gets better. I mean, for me, we'll talk about this more in phase two, but there's a streak, you know, you go first Avengers, Avengers 1, Iron Man 3, Winter Soldier, Guardians, Ant-Man. There's a couple of Ant films, but that's like a really consistently great kind of sound. Uh, almost record so anyways i'll do it everyone for this episode of comics to the cinema conversation hope y'all enjoyed and uh we'll see you for phase two take care